In this video, what we're going to be doing is checking out something I have never installed or looked at before. That is Ubuntu Studio. This theoretically should be the perfect Linux distribution for me, as primarily what I do here is kind of a something that requires a studio type environment, recording videos, working with audio, photos, things like that. Ubuntu Studio is an operating system for the creative individuals in areas of audio production, video production, graphic design, photography, and desktop publishing. We have a whole section here on why Ubuntu Studio, which just reiterates the three things it just mentioned. For example, for me, video is a big thing, so if I click on learn more here, it goes over some of the things that are pre-included. Watch OpenShot, FFmpeg. Personally, I don't use OpenShot. I heard it is pretty good, though. Uh, the thing with this distro is it seems that it might just be Ubuntu with a bunch of pre-installed applications. I'm hoping that's not the case because installing the applications that you need in Linux generally isn't a difficult thing to do. And if that's all this distro is, that is a little disappointing. If we go over here under features, oh, that's just gonna redirect us. So the graphics, for example, we have Blender, Eekscape, Poco Pixel, a couple other things. I wish they pre-included Krita. I just recently used Krita to finish up my uh, capstone project for school, which was a phenomenal experience. Not doing the project, but working in Krita nonetheless. <laughs> so with that, my download is just about finishing up here. I am going to load up GNOME boxes. I do kind of like here how they stuck with the uh, weird Ubuntu branding with their logo. And it does look like the default is going to be a KDE. So let's make this a little bigger. Let's rock with some 1080p, okay. So being that it is a KDE plasma distro, that alone is cool. We got some of the applications here, which are some good ones nonetheless. Oh, they do have Krita. They don't even mention that on their website. Okay, let's just kind of ignore that for now and install it. Let's see if they're using the uh, they're not. They're not using the regular or the new Ubuntu installer. So let's just run through this. This is your standard kind of Calamaris thing. I'm not going to bore you with the uh, the details of this. Boom, bada bing, the installation is done. Now, while this restarts, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, and you're not going to believe who it is. This video is sponsored by Linode, uh, soon to be Akamai Cloud Computing. You may start hearing me refer to them as Akamai, but Still, same great service. You can use a wide variety of Linux distributions to spin up your very own instance in the cloud. They have a marketplace full of one-click installers to get Docker, Ghost, Discourse, a bunch of different things up and running with ease. And don't you fret, if you use the link down below, you will get a $100 60-day credit to get started today. All right, looks like it's already booted up for us. Sign on in here. Looks like we could have picked our uh, preferred kind of display manager right there from the get-go. We got some 1080p action. Let's go ahead and keep that and then kind of run through this distribution. This is kind of a first look video. I don't really do these as often anymore, but nonetheless, it's still going to be kind of cool to check out. So on this top bar here, we have Firefox. We have uh, this tool here, which I've never heard of before. It looks like it's a uh, audio capture suite. So I might have to check that out, do some further investigation. We have Ardor, which is by far one of the uh, very best when it comes to audio manipulation, editing, things like that. I do recommend you check out the uh, Yumpa channel if you are interested in learning more about this. So if I go ahead and jump in, go with an empty template, all that looks good for now, just to at least get in there. You can see truly how complex and fabulous this application is. You can use it for basic audio editing and recording, as well as making beats, music, a whole bunch of different things. Again, I will leave a tutorial down below on that UFA channel if you're interested in doing some uh, audio production. So from there, we have OBS Studio, which of course is one of my favorite applications. I'm using it right now to record this video. And they do have a pretty late version. This I do not believe is the flat pack version, but they do have the latest 29th version. Again, we have Krita, which is a phenomenal. It's technically a painting tool, but again, I used it to make a giant poster board thing. So when it comes to that and like basic text editing and manipulation, it's good. But if you are an artist, Krita is a great tool for you. We have GIMP, I've talked about that a lot in the past. It's what I use to make all my thumbnails on this channel. We have Caden Live, a fantastic video editor, if it doesn't crash on you. We have Digicam, which is a really awesome photo management application. I obviously don't have any uh, pictures on this computer at the moment or this uh, virtual machine, but it, it's really good for managing your photos. And then we have more right here. We got the Dark Table, which is a uh, alternative to uh, Adobe Lightroom if you want to do some editing of some raw photographs. 
and then of course system settings. Now that is just some of the things we see up on the top. Let's jump into settings and see what we got going on here. So they have their own custom theme, the Ubuntu Studio Dark. I'm gonna scroll down. I'm really still not seeing a reason to use this necessarily other than maybe the theming and pre-installed applications we are rocking the 5.27 version of kde plasma default is x11 we have four gigs of ram i wonder how much system resources this thing is using let's jump into the system monitor shall we so it's using just under two gigs of ram kind of high but rather normal for your typical ubuntu install diving further into the applications under audio production they do pre-include audacity which between ardor and audacity i'm not really doing anything too advanced so audacity is generally the way I go but it looks like they have a bunch of other little tools definitely more than what is talked about on their website we have a virtual keyboard jack mixer LMMS which is another really advanced not really advanced but it's a pretty advanced uh, audio editing application graphic design lots of different tools so now I'm seeing how, why the actual ISO is so big it includes a lot more than what they say specifically on their website, but a huge suite of the kind of studio type tools that they're talking about here. Caden Live pre-included is good. That is definitely the most powerful video editor on Linux. And I'm not seeing OpenShot, so maybe they need to update their website because it is not matching up with what is actually here. Firefox and Thunderbird by default for media playback. They do not have NP4. VLC is really good, but I prefer MP4. If we go to Office, they're going to have the LibreOffice suite. And really, that, that seems to be about it. Just a bunch of... <laughs> Studio applications. This distribution has been recommended to me so much. I'm not, I'm not sure why. It is technically an official Ubuntu spin though, so... There's that going for it. I'm curious to how the pre-installed applications are here. Whether if it's just native repository or if it's a bunch of flat packs. Oh, that's not, of course, it's due to the fact it's an official Ubuntu spin. They're not gonna have flat pack on here. They're in fact going to use a whole bunch of snap packages. Looks like we have GNOME on here mixed with KDE. So a lot of these applications are either just native Ubuntu repository or snap packages specifically. So the versions you're gonna get are gonna depend a lot on what is available in those Ubuntu repositories. It's kind of like uh, Kubuntu, the uh, KDE version of Ubuntu, just with a custom theme and a bunch of applications added to it. Which again, you can install, I guess, this could be recommended for somebody who is kind of a creative individual that is just getting into Linux that might not know about all these different applications and it gives somebody a really good kind of playground to get involved and start messing with some of these applications, which a lot of them, by the way, like I mentioned, are phenomenal alternatives to a lot of like the Adobe Creative Cloud applications. So like Caden Live is your premiere. These two right here are gonna be your Photoshop, audio editors, we have Lightroom alternatives, so on and so forth. So if you kind of fit into that boat when you're, because Ubuntu, no matter what, no, I could talk as much crap on Ubuntu as I want. It is a pretty decent stable base and should work on most systems with absolutely no problems, but you want that KDE Plasma with a bunch of different tools and applications added, then it is good for you. But basically that was my quick look on Ubuntu Studio. Like I said, a lot of people wanted me to kind of check this out. I can see why if you are the new user, but for me personally, it's going to have to be a, a pass for now. Um, when it comes to checking out Linux distributions like this, if you guys have any suggestions, I'm going to take a look at MX Linux again. I haven't checked out that distribution for a while on this channel and it is a phenomenal Debian base. So I will be taking a look at that. Also, if you watched up to this point, I'm also going to be coming out with an Intel Nook review, an updated tour on my home lab setup, which is definitely worth checking out. I may do a dedicated review on this keyboard, which is awesome by the way it's by uh it's not by protoarch it's the uh, royal axe keyboard but they partnered with protoarch which is a sponsor on the channel so i'm kind of uh not sure if i want to do a separate video because then there obviously is a bias there but i do uh love this keyboard with all that i do hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye